Okay, today is a uh, Korg DSN 12 hours. This time, I'm just gonna do a little uh, tutorial on how to use it, like just the basics of it. Let's take a peek inside. So this will be a nice and sweet tutorial. Nothing too crazy with this one. Just teach you the basics on how to use it and you'll be on your way, pretty much. Start things off easy with uh, starting a new project file here. And just bring you straight into the into your workstation. I guess the first thing I can talk about is uh well the top. The oscilloscope over here on the top left. Right there. If you wanna like get a little flashy with the, the oscilloscope at the top, you can mess around with like how it looks and everything. This one's important too, the set over here, the settings. Here you can like uh, set the tempo, the BPM. How about do a classic 128? The step sequencer. 16 is a default, but you can go ham with the uh, 64 steps. Which means in each little track here, each little sequence, you get 64, 64 spots for your notes. That's a lot. Bring it back to 16 though. You can change the tempo for each pattern individually, which is pretty insane. And you can change the step for each of them, so like you can make some pretty unique uh, rhythms if you want to do stuff with that. I'll keep everything at default though. Okay, okay. So, everything on the left here, these are all tracks. These are all your sounds. And everything on the top, each column is organized as a a sequence. So over here you have banks. Four different banks and each of them contain like everything here. So bank A, B, C, and D. There's so much space to do stuff. So to edit the sound all you have to do is click the, well click track one, but you can click the box itself there and go to synth. And now that we're here, if you want to do some quick editing, you can use the shortcuts using these four buttons here. So the X button is to play and stop, just like good old DS10. But new things you can do are like the B button here, where you can hear the sound at middle C, which is pretty nice. The Y button mutes. Yep, so this mutes the sound. And then the A button solos it. Makes things a lot easier when you're <laughs> making sounds with the DSN-12. The initial states for all the tracks, from tracks 1 to 6, those would be like your synthesizer sounds. And then tracks 7 to 12, those would be your drum sounds. You know, as a default, that's how they sound. So this is 7. Track 7, which is the kick. Track 8, it's the snare. 9 is the hi-hat. And we got some other noises here. Oh, 11 and 12 are free spaces. Yeah, so that's how they uh, default it out for you, but you can organize it however you want, really. I guess first thing we gotta do is make a melody, so... How about... That's pretty simple. And we want the notes to be separated, so we'll do these. Change the gate. This like cuts the note off at the end. Then over here you can adjust the volume. It's kind of cool. And the next one on the top here is panning. So you can adjust the left and right audio channels. KX stands for Chaos X and Chaos Y over here. I think they'll do something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the automation bit. And if you want to like edit the automation there, you have to go to the top of the synthesizer screen here. Go to Chaos. And then you have to go to number three. That's where the Alta stuff is. 
And at the bottom here, right now it's adjusting cutoff and peak. That, that one's always good. So yeah, before I automated it with the, the sequencer there. But you can change the parameters to anything you want, and there's a lot of options, yeah. Cutoff and peak are pretty good, so I'm going to leave it at that. And then over here, another one. SMT for a smooth. And here, if you tap it, it changes the hold. So here you can listen how they're all smooth. And if I tap it to hold, it becomes more staggered. You can do some cool effects with that. Cool effects, yeah. Okay, let's do some sound editing. Yeah, that's a lot of knobs. There's a lot of things you can do to change the sound. Changes the octave, yeah, as indicated. Portamento. Changes the amount of time it takes to reach the next note. But VCO here, this is where you mainly change the sound with different sound waves here. And then if you want, you can make it a dual channel kind of deal with two sounds. You can change the pitch of the second oscillator over here. And the VCF, this is where a lot of the stuff happens too. How would I explain it? Okay, cutoff is like how crisp the sound is. That's pretty crisp. This becomes pretty muffled. And then peak would be like how wet the sound is. <laughs> so if peak is at the bottom, normal, sounds a little more wet like this. And if I turn down the cutoff, it's muffled. But if I turn up the peak, and then mess with the cutoff. Man, even though I use this stuff like all the time, I don't really know how to explain it very well. I kind of just, I kind of just do. The more you use it, the more you kind of get it, the more you know what the knobs do. Attack would be how long it takes for the note to reach full volume. Decay would be how long it would take until it reaches the amount of time to sustain the note. Sustain is holding the note at a certain uh, level. And then release would be how long it would take to for the note to fizzle out. I can't. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this properly, but I think that was that was close enough. You can also do stuff down here too. Changing the filter type. Low pass filter, high pass filter, and I think it's band pass filter. And then over here, you can adjust the, the volume of the synthesizer sound. And the overdrive. Yeah, so something that I like to do with my songs are chords. Chords are pretty fun to do. Because of DS10, I've come to use uh, seventh chords a lot. Like, that's part of my music <laughs> formula for me. So let me make a... F major 7th chord. What I want to do is add the second oscillator here. Change the balance to the middle, even that out. Now what I can do is I change the pitch to a perfect 5th. Went too high there. There we go, there we go, okay. <laughs> so now what I want to do is copy and paste what I made for that pattern. I guess I could name this. So I know where it is. If you go to Tone, Set Name, you go to Chord. I don't really name personally, I always try to like... <laughs> I'm always like searching in between all the tracks, but yeah, naming them would make it a lot easier. The copying and pasting part of Korg DSN 12. You have to be uh, pretty careful here, because you know, those those squares are tiny. 
So what I want to do is I want to copy the sequence and I want to copy the tone as well. So over here, S and T, S is for sequence and T is for tone. So I'll just click both of them and I'll copy a pattern. I'll select this one here, which is where the chord was. Now it automatically went to paste and I'll paste it on the one below it. Do I want to overwrite it? Yeah, okay. Go back to select so that you can pick the pattern. Then on track three this time, it's the same as track two. But I want to make a major seventh chord. So I'm going to move this up to A. Easy chord. I'm going to try uh, extending the step here. So I'll bring it up to 32, which is 16 times 2. And, uh, see, now it goes the second part here, so it's a bit longer. I'll just do the same pattern style. Change the panning. Change the volume here too, right? Right. You can press the up and down, up and down buttons here to go to uh, the hop between tracks. So right now I'm on track two. I'm gonna hop down to track three and change it up. Okay. Sounded sounded kind of nice. What I can do now, it's another technique that I do all the time. If you go into track, go to the patch screen where you know you can edit a bunch of variables and make some unique sounds here. What I like to do is adjust the the volume here. I'll sync it to the BPM. I'll adjust the frequency. Right now it's really slow. If I move it this way, it goes really fast. And if I move it to the middle, it's on every downbeat. I can do that with track three too. It's a little effect that I do all the time for my songs. I'll do a soft one for the melody here. While we're here, why don't I just add a bass line? Place the notes. I'm going to do the side chain effect here too. Now I'm going to kind of make it a little heavier. this sound more unique. Yeah, see the way that I tapped around there? Just messing around with parameters. Might as well work on the drums a bit. This kick could be better. I'll do this to increase the volume. Oops, yeah, like that. This is the snare. 
So I'll just do a quick snare like this. Let me adjust how it sounds. That works for the snare. Okay. The next on the list would be the hi-hat. Okay. This is my usual hi-hat technique. Take a peek, take a peek. Let's fill it up all the way first. We can adjust the volume to make things kind of cool too. This is my usual pattern. And then you can add stereo effects to the to the hi-hats too to make it more full, fuller sound. I came up with this pattern when I used a DS10 back in the day. So I'd always do something like this. The pattern usually looks like this. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Something like that. It's a little confusing, but it's a cool stereo effect. So I go up first. This. There, now it's like, you know, going back and forth. Turn down the volume, maybe. I guess what I can do now is uh, add some uh, flare. I think this one could use some stereo effects too. So, how about something like this? You know, just so it doesn't conflict with the hi-hat, it's, it's a different pattern. Sounds pretty cool, sounds nice. I don't like how this sounds anymore. What we can do to make it more uh, exciting would be to add some uh, effects, right? So let's go to the mix screen over here. This is where you can adjust, you know, the levels of stuff. Korg DSN 12 has like three effects you can use. Those are pretty handy. FX1, 2, and reverb. Let's go. Okay, yeah, we'll edit the parameters here on the FX tab. Yeah, three different, or no, five different effects you can use. And the same with FX2, too. We'll use Chorus. I'll turn that on for the melody. And for those, uh, these notes here, I'll turn on the reverb effect. Make it a bit longer. So if I want to extend this pattern, I got to copy the whole thing using this copy button. Instead of selecting a box, you can tap the red dot up here to copy the entire column. You can paste that somewhere else. I'll do that in number two. So now you got two copies of the same thing. And if you wanted to, you know, go smoothly to the next pattern, you can turn on the lock button there. Change the chords up. Go to the bass line. Number six, yep. I guess, uh, okay. There's also the pattern screen over here too. This would be like the closest thing to performing with the Korg DSN-12. <clears throat> like, you can do a bunch of crazy things with all these patterns since they're pre-made. You pre-make the patterns, uh, change the step so that, you know, they repeat quicker or however long you want them. Then you can just tap through different beats and play some tunes like that. Pre-made pre patterns like that. And you can hop between every single every single bank over here. So there's a lot of stuff to go through.
a lot of unique patterns you can make. It's pretty crazy. If you want it to like play a song without having to perform it, you can also go to pattern program over here. All the banks are there and it, the song plays from left to right. So Yeah, so once it, heat, once it reaches pattern 16, then the song will be finished. You can go to different banks, like bank, bank B over here. The song will move from left to right, and it will just pick the pattern that you chose for it. So here, it's playing the A, bank A pattern 1. And on number 5 here, it's playing bank, bank B pattern 1. So there's... There's a lot of stuff you can put in here, but yeah, the max is a 99, I think. Yeah, so you can only have a total of 99, uh, 99 patterns. You can also just mute certain parts of the song in certain patterns. I'll get rid of the chords on the next one. Yep, no chords, then we'll come back. Like that, yep. No melody. There's also a keyboard you can use if you press KBD over here. Changing the octave with the circle pad there. And there's also the chaos pad. Let's see, I'll go down here to change the scale. Major pentatonic as always, right? I want more octaves out of that, so I'll just change it to, how about full? Oh, you know what? I'm going to add a delay to that. I think that would sound good. So over here I can do a... Uh, easy improv with the chaos pad. Is Ionian still? Okay. Pentatonic, there we go. fun to mess around with that. That's nice. I think that's like everything for the basics, honestly. Okay, <laughs> for, for a start, I think that covered a lot of stuff. I guess the last important thing would be to save. Save and exit. Don't click the exit button. Click the save as. We'll call it, we'll call it the date today. 2022-06-09. There we go. Okay, I think that's good enough for uh, Korg DSN 12 as an intro, like a quick intro to Korg DSN 12. If there's anything else, like throw them in the comments. Love to see it. Come join the stream and ask me questions too if you're feeling it. And <laughs> by the way, too, Korg DSN 12 does come with its own manual. I was looking through it earlier before starting the stream. 
But yeah, this, if you, if there's anything you need to know, it's all here. <laughs> Back in the day, I read through the Korg DS10 instruction manual, like, all the time. That was fun. Like, I didn't understand most of it, but, you know, you gotta try it to feel it. But yeah, th this tells you everything. So yeah, definitely check it out <laughs> if you want a good read sometime. Anyways, that's it for that. Bring it back next time. Talk to you all later. Good night, good night.